Hey guys, my name is Vishal and I welcome you all to this session by Edureka. In today's session, we would be discussing yet another Microsoft Azure certification and that is AZ103. Yes, Microsoft Azure recently introduced this certification. Now, why did it introduce this certification? What all does it talks about and why do we need it? We would be discussing these topics in detail. But before that, let us quickly take a look at the offerings or the agenda of today's session. So I would start this session by talking about why did this transition happen? What does this particular topic or this particular certification cover? What are its prerequisites? What are some of the exam basics that you should know? What are the types of questions that you can expect and what's next for MCSE? That is for the people who have taken Microsoft Azure certifications in the past. How does it affect them? We would be taking a look at that as well. So guys, let's not waste any time and quickly get started then. So why did this transition happen? Now Microsoft Azure has this habit where they ensure that their customers or their exam takers are not hampered in any possible way. So they try to ensure that their certifications are up to date. They meet the market requirements. Employers would want to consider this particular certification and facts like these. I mean, they actually ensure that all these pointers are taken care of. And that is why what Microsoft Azure did few months back was they kind of followed a pattern that AWS was following for a while now and that pattern is introducing breakups or parts in a particular certification so that the content can be broken down and it becomes easier to take these certifications. So that is the major reason as in they wanted to break the content down and they actually wanted to introduce specialized approach. But having introduced two broken down certifications for each role, say for example, two for developer role, two for administrator role, and two for architect role. But what happened was, for some reasons, they had to actually go ahead and replace those two broken down certifications with a single approach or a single certification. And the reason for that was, again, to simplify this process into a more doable process. So that is why they introduced these certifications. And the latest one is AZ103, which is for the Azure Administrative Associate Certification. So these are the new certifications that they've introduced. So as I've mentioned six months back, all these three roles had two certifications. That is AZ100, AZ101, AZ200, 201, and AZ300 and 301. But with time, they realized that developer certification required only one exam, and they actually kind of merged 201 and 200 into one certification. Moving further, they did the same thing to AZ103 and that has been implemented since first week of May, which is very recent. So let us just go ahead and discuss the certification. Well, the prerequisites remain the same. Basically, the aim here is to cover complete know-how of Microsoft Azure platform, and this is for infrastructure and deployment perspective. What it does, it basically helps you understand the administrative role, and when you do get Microsoft certified, you probably would be getting a certification for administrative associate level, which is a certification similar to AWS SysOps Administrator Associate Certification. So when you talk about it from the perspective of administrators or admins, this is the certification they should be aiming for. What are the prerequisites that you should know? Well, basically, these are the people who manage cloud services that span over services like storage, security, networking and mostly compute capabilities. You should have thorough understanding of how basically IT infrastructures work. You should know how to manage various policies and various access controls. You would be expected to have proficiency in PowerShell and command line interface, which is important for all the three roles if you talk about the Azure examinations. And you should have knowledge about Azure portal, which is a must because you would be using Azure platform. ARM templates, you should have understanding of virtualization and other infrastructure storage service details. Having said that guys, these are some of the prerequisites. You would want to explore these topics a little more before getting into the certification phase. Moving further, what are the exam basics guys? You are expected to appear for this examination for a total of three hours. I mean, that is the duration. Now this is variable. Let me tell you that Microsoft Azure likes to keep you under the hood or under the dark shades where they do not kind of give you the complete details as in how long would the exam be how many questions you can expect so they would keep you under the dark for a while so it is variable but it is approximately three hours the duration 
the number of questions 16 total and this again is approximate it can be 45 it can be more than 60 to some extent 5 10 plus or minus basically now guys again this certification is fairly new and certain pointers here which i'm putting forth if the data is not very up to the mark please forgive me for that because this is very recent guys and it is still under speculation so i might or if i do miss out on any mistakes i hope that you would be considerate enough to forgive me on those things but yeah this is what you can expect more or less in this exam guys moving further what are the languages in which you can take this exam the previous exams you had options like spanish chinese french german russian japanese etc but these certifications recently have introduced the fact that they are only introduced in english language so with time as these exams get more familiar for others or they are into the market for a longer while we might expect these exams or certification exams to be conducted in different languages as well but for now it is just english you are expected to score 700 points which is not equal to 70 percent the way microsoft azure grades you is different probably a certain question might have two points certain question might have one point so there is no fixed schedule as in how are you going to score those 700 points so what is the exam fees now it varies depending upon the different geographical conditions because what happens is certain countries have different currencies and they have certain government laws which do not allow you to go out of the stringent policies and take these exams so if you are taking an exam from a particular country you would be expected to pay in those currencies and the fees might vary accordingly as we move into the explanation part probably i would be walking you through their website that is azure's website and we would be taking a look at some of these details to greater effect actually so meanwhile you bear with me so what are the types of questions that you can expect in this exam well first and foremost you'd be starting with a question that asks you what is your experience level whether you are mediumly experienced a beginner or an expert now do not mistake this question for the fact that if you select a beginner you would be asked easier questions no basically what they do is they actually just want to know where you are actually from and from what level of experience are you wishing to take this exam so that they can have a better understanding of what is the age group what is the experience level that people use or opt mostly to take these exams and what they can do for the other experience levels as well this being said guys once this question is out of the way then one important thing that microsoft azure is doing these days is it is moving away from multiple choice questions why and the reason it is doing that is microsoft azure believes that or most of the examiners believe that mcqs don't do justice to the level of intelligence that people have because particular problem might have multiple approaches to solve and that is why more scenario based questions are being introduced these days than just the mcqs because what mcqs do is they kind of give you the answers to a particular solution but they never tell you what approach one has taken to reach that particular solution and that is why mcqs is something that microsoft azure is moving away from so what does it do now it has certain drag and drop type of questions where scenarios would be given to you same with case studies you can expect certain put things in order kind of questions and some performance testing questions where you would be actually going through multiple scenarios and you'd be tested on the way you actually go ahead and carry out your exams once you solve a particular case study you'd be given the next case study to solve again these questions are still under the hood because we do not have too much information for now as people do actually go ahead and take this exam they would be in a much better state to tell as in what can you expect in these examinations what is next for mcse well for people who have taken the certifications there are two scenarios either you've taken the exam or you haven't taken the exam so if you've taken the exam and you have the 100 certification you do not have to go ahead and take 103 you would be getting a certification for the associate administrative exam for azure and if you have not taken the exam in that case you would be expected to pass 103 so yes guys do not worry if you have the certification it told, still holds the value if you are to take the examination i would suggest that you go through the syllabus because there were slighter changes as 100 and 101 were more or less combined or merged so some of the bits have increased so you might want to take a look at what are the questions that you can expect to do that guys i'm going to quickly switch into the azure's website and we're going to take a look at those things as well so guys what i've done is i've gone ahead and i've switched into this page or this website now this talks about azure administrator exam now there is a lot of information here which you might want to consider i've actually not gone through a lot of stuff here so even i would be going through it with you so let us try to take a look at certain important pointers 
as you can see on the screen starting on may 1 2019 you need to pass only 103 this combines the skills required in 100 and easy 101 as it says you can actually go ahead and schedule your exam here the fees united states it is 165 dollars go to other countries and this price might change it depends upon the currency that you plan to or your country basically supports so say for example if you come to india where i'm based right now you can actually go ahead and hi india here it is and it is 4800 indian rupees so you can check as in what is the fees that you are supposed to pay based on the geographical location you are based in these are the skills that it would measure you on now again guys there would be somewhere four to five units or sections from which you can expect the questions and the weightage would be equally distributed somewhere around 15 to 20 maybe 25 percent to the max and these are the questions that you can expect or these are the domains in which you can expect the questions that is you should be able to manage your subscriptions manage resource groups manage role based access control as well which is very important for administrative roles so these are the things that you can expect i would suggest that you actually go ahead and visit this particular website and take a look at what are the pointers what are the stuff that you can expect as you can click here you'd see the different bits in which the different kinds of questions that are expected for you the questions would basically focus on these major domains as in manage other subscriptions and resources it had the bits or the sub parts that we saw if you implement and manage storage these are the pointers it would focus the exam on or these are the pointers the exam would test you for this particular section deploy and manage virtual machines yes if you click on it it all talks about virtualization and stuff like that configure and manage your virtual networks and finally manage identities so guys as i've already mentioned these exams are fairly new and there are quite a few bits quite a few pointers which would be completely new for quite a few people so do actually go ahead and visit this website take a look at the pointers as in what is added what is removed see or have discussion with people who are taking these certification exams so that you get a better picture as in what can you expect out of this exam as far as the basic or the nitty gritties of this particular session is concerned i believe that i've talked a lot about the certification and i hope that you have a better picture as to what you can expect in this particular examination having said that guys i would be resting this session here if you like this video make sure you press the like button if you have any queries put those in the comment section and we'll get back to you you can also let us know how you felt this video was in the comment section having said that guys i would be resting it here thank you bye bye i hope you have enjoyed listening to this video Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!